We got a band list, boys. I am in my bed, so I'm cozy as hell. I haven't showered yet, because we got the band list before I woke up at, like, 7. And, yeah, I haven't wrote a script yet, so we're going to talk about the band list. So, it's your boy Gabe, and my son, and my other son, my third son. Okay, so, for those of you that haven't seen our uh, hella sick band list, we got literally nothing changed for like the second time since they announced a band list. It was great. The only thing that they announced was for Standard, Bushi put OTT, Kagero, Angels and Bermuda on the watch list, whatever the fuck that means. And for premium, they just put Bermudas on the watch list. So, um, honestly, they really didn't need to hit anything for like either format. And anything that they might have like needed to hit was kind of in like a weird position just based off of like how early it was released. So, like, for standard. And premium, both of them are, like, in really, really honestly good places. Like, you might not like what's meta, but the formats themselves are both pretty dang diverse. So, there really isn't a need to hit much. And anything that might need to be hit, like, if you hit it, it kind of kills the deck outright. It's, it's kind of just in a weird position, because we have all of these things that are coming out and like they're making decks better but they are really recent like japan got the bermuda booster like two months ago and it's still on a downturn and we got like kagero is on the list because it got like two good support cards in the forms of the great in the end like back to back but like they couldn't really do anything to kagero because they got the end like three days ago at the time of recording this video, so, like, it's really too damn early for them to actually do anything to Kagero, and Bermuda, like, sure, it was a problem the month it came out, but it's really not a problem card anymore, so it really doesn't, it's not a problem clan anymore, so in standard, it really doesn't need to be addressed, and so, the, now, honestly, and that's it, like, they really isn't anything that they needed to hit, and, like, anything that they hit would either A, not do enough, or it would do too much and the decks would be, like, unplayable, so it really isn't, like, worth it. And kind of, like, the one good, like, really good thing about, like, monthly releases of product is, like, power creep kind of happens kind of quickly, so, like, because of that, you don't really... Decks that are, like, meta and, like, are meta for super long with like only rare cases with things like uh gear chronicle when time loop was like a thing but yeah there really isn't anything that they needed to hit and anything that they might consider hitting is also kind of just too new like they can't hit anything for kagro because they literally got a support card like a week ago in the forms of, like, the end and other, and, like, Blade Vaster, so it's just too early for them to even try to touch Kagero. The, honestly, the, like, the anomalies and the elephants in the room are Angel Feather and OTT, because, like, yes, they were both good and, like, at least tier 2 range since they came out, but just because they're tier 2 doesn't need, mean that they need to be addressed, like, First off, like, with a lot of things in Standard, what are you going to hit for both of them that doesn't, like, outright kill it? Nothing is, like, a super broken that makes them, like, broken to be on a ban list, and that's because they're Tier 2. Like, they really don't need to be addressed because they're not, like, problems in the format at all. Um, so, I th honestly, I think why they're on the watch list is mostly due to time constraints. So, at, like, big events, like regionals or whatever, rounds are, like, what, 30, 35 minutes, and, like, games can, like, that's, and it's also only best of one, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! has, like, similar round times, and it's two out of three, and an infinitely longer-lasting game, and, like, we could, we, 
some for some fucking reason Vanguard players can't finish one game in like half an hour, forty five minutes. So I think the reason they're on the watch list is because these clans are very very grindy and like they have decent power output, but it's not enough to like make it games end quickly. And because they draw and can heal, they can't be killed that easily either. Especially because they you know get protect gifts so i think the real reason that they're on the list is because bushi really hates like going to time and i think all of us hate going to time but i think bushi especially does it because like they've hit things that weren't relevant just because of like how of how they affect like an actual tournament procedure like in the middle of g era they put refros and lisbeth to one and this was, like, around GBT7 when neither of those clans were really doing anything. Neonector didn't do anything in G until, like, it got the Zoo Booster. And Angel stopped mattering after, like, set four, really. So, like, it didn't... I think, like, so they got hit because they just made games last too long and slow playing became, like, too much of a thing with those cards. And I think that's just kind of the case with Angels and OTT especially since, like, with newer support, they're getting better draw engines and resources. And, like, if you don't play... I don't know if, like, how many of you play OTT. If you don't play OTT, the mirror match is the worst thing I have ever experienced in my life. Like, if you're playing, like, the... what What is it? Like, pentagonal, it's, like, one thing, because, like... The it's it's a it's a game of attrition and deck out and decking out is faster when you do five drive checks, but like the daughter mirror is just awful. Like, I don't care how skill intensive you think it is, or if you don't think it's skill intensive at all, it's literally just turning cards sideways and drawing here and there. It's so so boring, and it just lasts forever. And I feel like Angels is kind of the same thing, because, like, Metatron is basically just daughter, except instead of getting a card to hand, you're healing one, basically. So, like, it can honestly be considered even grindier. So, yeah, it's just, like, I think the real reason they're on the watch list is just because, like, not because they're strong, it's just they're so so slow like yeah they're protect clans and protect clans this whole thing is like being this like grindy not necessarily slow place clan but like it gets like all of its um like dividends paid out in the late game but like even by protect clan standards they're incredibly slow like mega colony and Grand Blue really aren't that slow. Like, they they have cut... Like, granted, they're not in a great place right now, but they're able to, like, actually put up forms of aggression, or in the case of Mega Colony and Nubatava being bad and losing early. But, like... And Darker Regulars with, like, NLK is just aggressive. So, like, those games, they can last a bit because it's, like, kind of the nature of Protect Clans... But it's nowhere near as long as Angel and OTT. So I think, like, if Bushi were to address them, I honestly don't even know what they would do because the real things that they need to address is just the speed. Like, Angels started, like, after we got Ultra Rare Booster, it was, like, really good that month. Then a little bit late, like, around Miyagi, it really dipped down. It didn't start becoming, like, tier 2, tier 1 range until set 4 with Murakumo, because Angels is a really good counter to Murakumo. But, like, ever since Bermuda, it's been on, like, a like a downturn. Same with OTT. And also, they really can't hit OTT, because the OTT is getting support in, like, a month um, in Japan after it. Like, we're getting... Um, it's after my glorious justice, so it's getting OTT is getting support in less than two months. So they really can't hit anything because it's probably going to be needed to be used in the next support. So like they're 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 on the watch list, but I also don't even think they're going to be touched because a the idea of a watch list is stupid. It's just like this might get banned. That doesn't answer my fucking question. But also like, what can they hit 
to make the games go faster, but not make these clans just dead. Like if they, if they put Zerakiel or Metatron to anything lower than like where they're at, Angel is just going to be unplayable. And if they do a thing where like you can't run them together, it's also going to be unplayable. The reason why it's able to top it all is because these these are very good cards. They just happen to make a slow game state. So, like yeah, they're on the watch list. But it's not for like a bro- like a reason that they're broken, and I think it's just not gonna go anywhere just because I don't really I might be wrong on this, but like I just don't think that there's anything that they can hit to like make it worth it to actually touch them and not have the people that play those decks be like, what the hell you didn't need to do this? Because realistically they don't. They are tier they're like they're both tier two range at best. Like, they're good, but they're nowhere near the top tables of where Standard's at, so there's no reason to touch them. On to Premium. So, for the Premium quote-unquote ban list, they said that the watch list only consisted of Bermudas. Now, the reason why they did that, I think, is pretty obvious. Bermuda in Premium was still really good even before the Melody set came out. So they were still able to top high-level events even without V-triggers, just because of how stupid the and stuff was at the end of G. Like, it was pretty obvious that they were, like, they were only going to become even dumber once they started getting better triggers. But the reason why I also agree that they didn't need to ban things is because Japan, right before this came out, got the Premium Collection release. We just got that this past weekend at the time of recording this video, and... The premium collection, I think we most of us have looked at it, and it really like is just like a huge just upheaval of the meta, and it just like shits wild in that set. I don't think they need to hit anything because on top of a lot of things in that set being really really good, the Bermuda one itself isn't good. Like Shandy is a fine card, but it's really only great in the Harmony variant. Which isn't the good variant, so nobody cares. So, it's on the list, the watch list, because they might be wrong, and Shandy might end up being what makes it broken, and Bermudas might end up being, like, super, super dumb. But I do agree that they didn't need to hit anything, because they did release a very, this, um, they did just release this product that will definitely largely affect the meta, so... By the end of it, like, maybe in, like, the next couple weeks, Bermudas will be completely gone. If they hit it right before this premium set came out, and then, like, premium doesn't do anything, and Bermuda premium doesn't do anything, there's, like, no reason for, um, it to be hit at all, so that would just be a dick move to the Bermuda players, honestly. Now, the other thing that people were trying to call out to get hit is Azul. Because Criff's superior riding and then striding when your opponent's a grade two can get kind of wonky, but like I I honestly didn't think it was gonna get hit, and the real reason is because Spearax is a card. For those of you who don't know what the premium collection gold paladin card is, it is um Golden Dragon Spear X Dragon, which is um Soul Blast 1, flip any card face up once per turn, check top 5, call 2, and shuffle. The other ability is Unite. If your Vanguard is grade 3, counter blast 2, discard 1, stride this card. So it's basically just Seabreeze that doesn't look at your opponent's grade. So because of that, it's pretty obvious that, like, they weren't going to hit Criff because they just released a card that was designed with the Criff combo in mind. And, like, yes, it is a very good combo, and it's only made better because of Spearex, but it also wasn't really that much of a problem. It At, at World's Top 8, only three of them were Ezel, and, that was, bef- and like, that was before Premium, and Spearex is by no means the best card in the set. And, like, I know it just came out, but I found a list for a Premium Tournament I don't know how to pronounce it. It's, like, called Pops Up or something. P-O-P-S-U-P-O-2. And we don't have the specific numbers of the entrance, but 
Gold were only the fourth most represented deck in that set, and that's after getting a support card for its main combo. So it did like, p- yeah, people wanted it to get hit. It's not even that great. Like it doesn't. They weren't gonna touch it because they gave it a support card, but they're also not gonna touch it because it doesn't need to be touched. Like yeah, it's great, and like when you're at grade one and they get to three and stride when you're at two, it can be frustrating. You can be set back, but like. It's really not doing a whole lot in the in the grand scheme of things and how the game is working, so they really didn't need to touch it at all. Now, um, other than that, there are other things that people are like thinking of touching, like um, Ichi Tom because it's like hashtag no fight no card, but like it wasn't doing much before premium collection. I have the 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 list of this event. And Ichitom is only the second most represented after the Gastille and LK combo. But also, part of why it didn't get touched is they released a new Ichikashima. So they're not going to release a card and then hit it the, in like the next days after its release. And like, I've seen a couple comments of like stupid people on the internet saying like, Oh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, they touch ca- they they hit the Pendulum deck three days after it came out, so Vanguard can do it. But then you, as somebody who actually plays Yu-Gi-Oh and knows how to think about things, yeah, they did hit that Pepe deck the, like the weekend it came out. That's because that Pepe deck in its first big event got twenty nine out of thirty two tops. For those of you that don't know what basic math is, 29 divided by 32 is 90% of tops. Yeah, Gastille and LK is good. Yeah, Ichi Tom is good. Yeah, Victor Bustard is good. Yes, um, Azel Criff is good. These four decks combined in this first event that we saw only make up 50% together. It ha- They're not going to touch any of these things right out of the gate because they have just over half of Pepe's performance with four decks combined in one. They don't need to hit it at all. There's genuinely zero reason to hit any of these. So, like, we haven't had anything that Bushi has needed to touch like that where we where it's, like, 90% of it. I honestly think it was dumb to say that, like, oh, we have a ban list and then have it not be anything. They should have just said... Uh, update for the tournament scene these are being watched for what they do but like because they said this is a ban list and they didn't deliver that's why people are just like what the hell about it but i genuinely didn't like going into this like even before they announced the ban list the only thing i ever in like my experience in standard and premium the only thing i think that they actually needed to hit was the pale moon infinite loop which they unfortunately didn't address but like yeah, it's a frustrating loop, but if it's not doing that much, they don't need to, so, like, it's fine. But I just feel like the concept of infinite loops, consistent or not, shouldn't be in the game. But I think Bushi definitely made the right decision not hitting anything, because genuinely nothing needed to get hit, and anything that they tried to hit would probably just get negative outcry from the community because it's too new, or it's genuinely not good enough. But, um, yeah, this is all I wanted to say. I wanted to talk about the ban list because it came out today at the time of recording. Probably won't be up until later in the week. Got 20 minutes of ad revenue. Uh, got the boys. Wait, I think the other one fell down the crevice of my bed. Here we go. Oh, wait, there. There he is. Third boy. Uh, this video was brought to you by Rowlet Gang. Gang, gang. And uh, like, comment, subscribe.